Hi everyone, in this video, I'll be demonstrating to you how to solve a trade risk bubbles question. To recognize a trade risk bubbles question, look at the question requirements and they will ask you to prepare the allowance for impairments of trade risk bubbles account. So how do we go about solving this question? In part A, they ask you to explain the term allowance for impairment of trade receivables. So the answer given is here. As such, allowance for impairment of trade receivables is a contra asset account. A contra asset account basically is the opposite of an asset account. And it is presented as a deduction against the trade receivables on the balance sheet. So what this means is that the allowance account represents the amount of trade receivables that is unlikely to be collectible. In other words, we set up this account just so that we can record customers who show us a 50-50% of paying us out. They are still our customers, but they are showing troubles of paying. Next, in part B, you are to prepare the journal entries to record Mr. Sim's bankruptcy in Mahmoud's books. So Mr. Sim is our customer and he got bankrupt. So here, the information, if you look, find where Mr. Sim is, is in the additional information. So in additional information 1, it says that Mr. Sim went bankrupt on 2nd of February 2015. His outstanding debt of $600 was written off. So here we go. To prepare a journal entry, first we need to prepare the correct format. With journal entry, there's only a debit column and a credit column. And here, Mr. Sim went bankrupt on 2015. And the date that he went bankrupt was actually February 2nd. When a customer goes bankrupt, the general entry to it is to debit the allowance for impairment of trade receivables and to credit trade receivable Mr. Sim himself. So here we are going to write 600 because that was the amount that he owed us. Okay. Why do we debit allowance account? You think back, allowance is a contra asset account, meaning it is the opposite of an asset. In other words, it is a minus plus account. So to remove from this account, to remove Mr. Sim from this account, we are going to put it in the minus column, which happens to be the debit column. Next, in part C, Question asks you to prepare the allowance for impairments of trade receivables account for each of the two years ended 30th June 2014 and 30th June 2015. The moment you see the word accounts here, it means that you have to prepare a ledger account. So here we go. I'm writing the title for the account. And this time around, because you are asked to prepare a ledger account, it will have three columns, debit, credit, and balance. Now to do this question, you always need to check out and find out if there is any beginning balance for the allowance for impairment of trade receivables. In this question, there is no beginning allowance account. How can you tell? It says here that the financial year of Mahmoud's business ends on 30th of June. So this is a very important information. Okay, that means it does not have a calendar year sort of financial year. It ends on 30th of June, therefore it starts on the 1st of July. And on 30th of June 2014, Mahmoud decided to create an allowance for impairment of trade receivables, meaning there was no beginning balance of allowance. Now remember that the allowance account has a closure of balance brought down. 
However, because we don't have any beginning balance, we will skip the balance brought down entry in the first year. Then what happens is we are to recognize that these values down here, based on objective evidence, the following debts were likely to be uncollectible. Whenever you see the word likely to be uncollectible, this actually refers to your allowance amount. Whereas up here refers to your treat receivables amount. So these values, these figures, will actually go into your allowance account. Now how do we prepare this? Since we skip the balance brought down line, now we need to see whether there were any significant um, incidents in the first year, which is on the year ending 30th June 2014. Based on the additional information, Mr. Seaman went bankrupt on 2nd February 2015. So in the first year, 30th June 2014, no customer went bankrupt. However, we have estimated that a total of $5,240 worth of money is estimated to be uncollectible. So initially we had zero, and now it increases to 5240. We need to recognize this increase. And the increase is actually what we call the impairment loss on trade receivables. So it is a loss, so with more losses, we have more and increased in the allowance account. Lesser losses, we will reduce the allowance account. The date will be on the last day of the financial year, which is the day of June. In this case, it's the year for 2014. Now, this is a contract asset account, so its nature is a minus plus nature. To increase the allowance account, we will then need to credit the amount of 5240 Show your workings next to the account. And therefore, this will be your running balance in the first financial year. So don't forget, that we need to have a closure of the balance brought down. So we will write July 1st, the next day, which is the first day of the next second, um, the next financial year. And this time around, we have a beginning balance of 5240. So first year done, we will now move on to the second year. With a beginning balance of 5240, let's find out if there's any customer who went bankrupt. So we had Mr. Sim, who went bankrupt on the 2nd of February, 2015. So we need to write the next calendar year, 2015, and on February 2nd, we have Mr. Sim going bankrupt. So since we are preparing the allowance account, the partner's name will actually be treat receivable. And since Mr. Simon is bankrupt, we will have to remove him from our allowance account. He is confirmed to not be able to pay us, and we will write 600 here. And then, what we'll do is we will calculate the running balance first. Next, with no one else going bankrupt, we find out in 2015, the amount estimated to be likely to be uncollectible is only 3,100. However, right now, according to the running balance, we have a bit more, which is at 4,640. So we actually now need to reduce our allowance account. To reduce it, we will have to put the amount on the, credit, on the debit side. Because the debit side is the minus side. However, particulars is still the same. So we're going to write down impairments loss on trade receivables. But since we need to show you're working, we're going to write 4640 minus 3100. And here, we'll have 1, 5, 
four zero of debit so that we have a three thousand one hundred worth of allowance at the end of the financial year so there you go this is how you prepare the allowance account without forgetting that we need to have a closure of July 1st and it's brought down so this is how it goes for your allowance account